The Lal Street snapped its eight-day winning streak, but the Sensex and the Nifty managed to end in the green for the fifth straight week, despite the fall that we saw on Friday. But what's the road ahead? Hello and welcome to Editor's Roundtable. I'm Sonia Shanoi. With me today, we have my editors, Anit Singhal, Prashant Nair, Ekta Batra. Folks, it was a, a great week. I mean, you can't deny that, right? Although Friday was a bit of a dampener. But nevertheless, we, what, five, six weeks, not just for us, but for the global markets as well. Are we, up for the, are we up for the week? I mean, uh, because it yeah. became touch and go towards the March. end, right? Yeah. March, March, really, just about there. <laughs> I think uh, the other key highlight for this week was that uh, this is the last of the truncated weeks, right? Uh, so the, the long weekends, we won't get them anymore. We have one more holiday We have a holiday at the end of the month. Yeah, but uh, jokes aside, uh, uh, you know, very, very sort of interesting bit of uh, price action on Friday, uh, Sonia. You know, we spoke about it this, this morning as well, that, you know, from the risk-reward point of view, but let's see next week, you know, what, what do we have? Uh, but uh, the price action on the Friday market was quite interesting. And give and take everything, I mean, we're what, still 4%, 3% away from all-time mm. highs, right? Mm. So that just goes to show that this is a buy on dips market. Whether people want to believe it or not, there's still a FOMO feeling. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, this is a stealth rally or whatever you want to call it. But given like everything, we're still very close to all-time highs. We are, but, uh, you know, if you ask a runner, uh, the last bit is the toughest. You know, just when you can spot the finishing, finishing line, <laughs> that's when things get. You know, start, I, but start I, I take that point because you know, people have moved completely to one side now, and opinions follow prices. Prices have been moving higher, so it's become a bull market. Uh, I mean, it, people are now calling it a bull market. It's a new bull, even a new bull market. Or for some, the old bull market never ended. This was yeah. just a correction, mm -hmm. and it's possible. It's true. But I think Friday's close, we've ended below, uh, you know, I put this uh, chart out last week, the trend line, uh, which is from the all-time high of 18,604. Today, uh, on Friday, uh, today, we've ended just below it. I mean, you know, about 50, 60 points under it. Yeah. So I would say it's touch and go. It's possible uh, that uh, there is some more retracement in terms of prices, some more pullback. That kind of a thing. But just, just on that point, this week we saw the first FII sell figure as well come through. But is that a point of concern? Because that's the first time that, since I the 27th of July. Because of, the July. Block, uh, because of a large mainly trade. So that uh, momentum has to sustain for us to actually even sustain Absolutely. those levels. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, was, but on the market itself overall, I mean, things were uh, good. Then they kind of petered off a little bit. What are the big cues to watch? Yeah, Sonia, the issue with this market is this is a market in which markets move in one go. Mm -hmm. There's no in-between, you know, it's either bull or the bear. Mm -hmm. This market just moves one way. In that sense, the Friday dip looked a bit sinister to me because it wasn't bought. And uh, there was a very important call that we had from Lawrence Balenco, who's making this point that the market in India has triggered an exhaustion signal. He's using DMARC signal. DMARC uh, signal is one of the most used technical signals. Uh, uh, and uh, the reason he's using it is that a similar exhaustion signal was uh, seen previous three tops. If you see the last three times the market stopped out, starting from October 2021, the same signal was witnessed. Uh, what's that signal? That signal is the RSI, the 14-day RSI on daily charts. I think Prashant has been also talking about it. Uh, it's it's moved to 83.84. That's some kind of topish signal. Now, uh, that's theoretical, of course. Let's see if you know this actually translates into the market topping out. One day, of course, doesn't you know one swallow doesn't make a summer. But that's something that you got to keep an eye on. The other interesting bit that I read. Uh, over the last couple of days is that in the US there has been some heavy institutional selling for two days which the market has ignored. Uh, in fact, the hedge funds are now sitting on $107 billion of shorts in S&P 500. Now, do these shorts or do these hedge funds know something which we don't? Or are these shorts going to be trapped and the market is going to make uh, you know another one-way move? I think it's going to be fascinating. Uh, the reason uh, you know I say this is going to be fascinating is the price point at which we are right now, mm. both for US markets and for us. If we turn from here, we will make a lower top. Last time, post the Ukraine war, the market topped out at 18,200. So if this time we're topping out at 18,000, then we would definitely make a lower top. Uh, so that's the risk as, at this point in time. But you know, that's just because of one day's price action. Mm. We need to see more over the next week or so. If we start to see more declines and the, those declines not getting arrested, perhaps that theory will play out. Uh, but Prashant, some very interesting fund action, right? I mean, it's extremely interesting, <laughs> frenzied, right? Uh, the fund activities, uh, what we're calling it. So let me just uh, quickly tell you and go onto the big wall and tell you, uh, you know, what we've actually seen uh, in terms of the sort of uh, fund action, the deal making that we've seen uh, at a very, very fast pace. Uh, so I counted the numbers. It adds up to $4 billion worth of uh, 
uh, sort of uh, you know deals that we've seen uh, over the last one month. So this is actually not even full 30, 31 days, working days. It'll, it'll be less than that. So uh, $4 billion, I mean, it's a large figure. So, I, and I maybe I've missed out many, but this has all the prominent large ones, right? Most of these are block trades, where there is one entity which is selling, and I mean, maybe one on the other side or many entities buying. Look at Zomato. Uh, that was right at the beginning of August, 3,100 crores worth of block, uh, which changed hands. Where is the Zomato share price from the time that the deal happened? The deal was struck at 50 rupees. If you uh, take the current market price, Zomato share price is about 29% higher from that price. So not only did a very large block trade happen, the price has moved up since. You look at HDFC AMC, another block trade, 12.6% higher, the share price. It was a 2300 crore block, uh, block trade. AU Bank was a QIP, worth 2000 crores. Again, we are higher. Loda, which is Macrotech, 1000 crore block trade. 10% uh, of the, 10% is the uh, price change since then. Crompton Consumer was a pretty large block trade as well. Uh, that's uh, 800 crores. Uh, yes Bank is a preferential issue, but I've included that purposely because, I mean, for an entity like Yes Bank to raise mm. 8,000 crores was maybe two months back, three months back, un unthinkable, right? But it's done that, and marquee investors have come in. Sona Comstar, block trade of 4,900 crores. Max Healthcare, of course, the most recent, uh, 9,200 crores, the, uh, the larger and the more recent one, and CAMS, of course, that we saw on Friday, 459 crores or so. So just what are some of the takeaways, uh, at least for me, from what all this data? Large blocks, QIPs, preferential issues are a frequent uh, occurrence now. So in a way, the market which was closed for these kind of transactions is open once again. Uh, average stock price gains of all those nine deals that I mentioned from the time, from the strike price, the deal price to the CMP is about 11%, which is not bad. Uh, just a, a few sort of specific names to give you a flavor of what's going on. GIC, Government of Singapore, has been a big buyer in deals. Uh, so, you know, I could look at specific deals like Max Healthcare, Sona, Comstar, etc., where th they've come in heavily. Uh, Capital International, which cumulatively in, in India owns about $50 billion worth of stocks. They're, they are big buyers. They bought clean 10% of Max Healthcare in one shot, right? So, another, uh, it's, it's basically a vote of confidence, nothing else. Uh, even, I mean, as I said, Yes Bank, right? Unthinkable three months back, but they've got commitment from a player like Carlyle, big number. And of course, uh, other old uh, sort of uh, investors like Fidelity, GQG Partners, etc. Uh, they, they've been buyers as well. This is a number I put out earlier this week uh, on Twitter, but I think it's a relevant one, relevant one which many are asking. FIIs, and by the way, all this deal activity has happened as FIIs have bought three and a half billion dollars, right? This is July till date. Three and a half billion dollars. And all this activity, <coughs> the market opens up for companies to raise money, block trades are happening. But that is a fraction. That's a fraction of what they sold between October 2021 and June 2029. It's a tantalizing thought. They sold 33, they've only bought back about 10, little over 10% of what they sold. I mean, what happens if they are buyers in greater force, greater numbers? Uh, I mean, where could the market be? And I think that's a question which many out there are asking. So that's basically from me today. But a lot of activity in the healthcare space, a lot of volatile movement in the healthcare space. Ekta, over to you. Yes, absolutely, Prashant. You know, it's always a big whole host of uh, news pieces with pharmaceuticals, if it's the US, if it's India. And this entire week, there was a lot of news flow which came in from the US. In fact, uh, it was particularly on a settlement of a drug which we have very commonly used in India, still use, as well as the US, which is basically ranitidine or the gas-reducing uh, or acid-reducing drug. Uh, known popularly as Zantac in uh, many countries. Now, what exactly happened was that there was a settlement which took place in the US with generic pharma companies such as Sun Pharma as well as Dr. Reddy's as well as the likes of Teva in the US, etc., where they paid around $500,000 to a person who claimed that he got cancer because of the use of the generic version of Zantac in the US. Now, what this means is that the fear is that there could be many more such litigations going forward which could impact generic companies. The liability that they could face could be much higher. They could face many more such type of litigations going forward because cancer-causing substances such as NDME, which was found in ranitidine, was also found in other drugs such as uh, blood pressure drugs, which are called sartans, 
uh, or metformin which is basically used extended release of metformin which is basically used to treat diabetes so the fear is that this could be a long way ahead stocks such as sun pharma were also in focus because of the halol facility the mohali observations came out then uh, the uh, halol plant was also continue to be classified as an OAI. If you talk about valuations, you know, there is a correction which has taken place, but some stocks such as Sun as well as the likes of Cipla continue to be resilient. But Sonia, you're watching the entire auto space. It's been, uh, you know, absolutely spectacular in terms of the number of cars being launched in 2022. Absolutely. And, and the one that stood out was uh, the little one from Maruti. It was, but before that, you know, I mean, it's, it's scary, right, to think that you go out there and you buy an OTC drug, and then you get cancer because of that. I mean, aren't medicine supposed to cure your, cure your disease? And yeah. you, I mean, that's perhaps what's the latest You know, there's happening. so many points of contention on that. But yes, it's extended use yeah. over a period of time. But GSK has come out clearly and said that, you know what, we use, uh, we've got scientific evidence that there's no correlation. So the debate is still out. But still, there are settlements which are taking place. Okay, well, that's on the pharma space. As you said, auto stocks were in the fast lane this time around. So I'm just going to move over to the big wall to tell you, in case you missed out on the action this week, here's what took place. Well, auto stocks were clearly in the fast lane this week. Most auto stocks hit fresh 52-week highs. You hit a dart in the dark and you would have got it right in the auto space. I picked four stocks, m and Aisha Motors, TVS, Apollo, all at fresh 52-week highs. In fact, m and is the biggest gainer this year now. It's up 50% in 2022. You have Aisha Motors that rallied 10% in August alone. TVS Motor has been a big gainer as well, up almost about 50-odd percent for the year. Now, it was a big week of launches and, you know, that really uh, got things fired up. M&M unveiled five new electric SUVs in this week. The launch will be in December of 2024, though. Uh, M&M is also looking to launch XUV 400 in September, so that's the next big thing to look forward to. And there are reports that they will be acquiring uh, General Motors' Talegaon plant in order to further their expansion plans. Maruti was not too far behind. It launched the Alto K10 in the hatchback segment, and its price is quite affordable, actually, if anyone's looking forward to that one. Uh, sub 4 lakhs ca category, so Maruti is another one that I was tracking this week. Tyre stocks were also in the fast lane. Of course, because of new launches, you will need more tyres, so more business for them. But apart from that, rubber prices are at 19-month lows. Apollo tyres hit a fresh 52-week high. And Nomura put out a very interesting note where they said that a 10% drop in natural rubber and crude derivatives can improve Apollo tyres margins by 170 basis points. The only problem is that the valuations for some of these stocks have become a bit steep now. If you look at the two-wheeler space, Bajaj and Hero are fine. They are in line with historic averages of 15 to 17%. The problem really is TVS Motors now become quite expensive, 26 times FY24. And Aisha Motors as well, after the run-up, is now trading at almost 28 times. Let's move on to the passenger vehicle space. Maruti and m, &M have also uh, higher than their historic averages at about 20 to 25 times. While Ashok Leyland and Tata Motors in the commercial vehicle space are not too bad, about 12 to 20 times over there. But all in all, autos were in the fast lane this week and most stocks hit fresh 52-week highs. Welcome back. You're watching Editor's Roundtable. We have a guest joining us now. Pramod Gubi is joining us. He's co-founder of Masterless Investment Managers. Uh, Pramod, good evening. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, the key highlight for this market has been the sort of return of FI buying, right? But there's, there's also this debate uh, that, you know, what we have right now is hot money sort of replacing uh, some of the more uh, uh, sort of strategic money. You know, we've seen so many block deals, for example. Uh, your thoughts? Well, <laughs> like I said the last time also, I'm not the best person to answer what type of money is coming in. But I think in general, you can see a, see a sense that People are getting more comfortable with uh, with the interest rate uh, hikes. Although uh, yesterday's minutes suggested that we are not done with, uh, I'm sure there is more to come here. But I think uh, broadly, people reckon that uh, you know inflation is is coming under control, and therefore maybe we don't see that much of a tightening as uh, we had once envisaged. Uh, that seems to be sort of driving uh, flows towards uh, risk assets, including equities and emerging market equities. Within that, I, I reckon uh, India is being seen in more positive light uh, from whatever conversations we've had with offshore allocators. Uh, India is increasingly been, uh, being seen in more positive light, partly give, given what's happening in China, and, and China is a big uh, part of the emerging market index. And if people are concerned about what's happening in China, they are looking for alternatives. 
And I think in terms of the size of the economy, India clearly stacks up. Um, and there are very few alternatives within the emerging markets that can offer this sort of uh, uh, capital deployment opportunity. And from our own perspective, I think India has done well in terms of uh, keeping the economic conditions in good shape despite uh, the headwinds that we've had to face. Um, uh, the banking system is, is in good order. Uh, we've seen credit growth coming back after a long time. Um, earning season hasn't been uh, that bad. And, uh, and more importantly, we've dealt with uh, inflation better than uh, a lot of other countries, better than um, ourselves in the past. So I think a lot of boxes are being ticked for India just when uh, some of our emerging market peers uh, sort of not doing great for themselves. Uh, Pramod, hi. Uh, do you think banking and financial uh, financial services as a sector, uh, what will it take for it to start to really fire? Uh, you know, some of these uh, block uh, deals data, etc., that I was presenting earlier, very large funds like capital, etc., uh, although they've only bought back a small portion of what they sold uh, in the preceding nine months, uh, is, 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 is the preference banking financial services? One doubts it, looking at the kind of transactions which has happened, or price performance for that matter. Any thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, we've been quite positive on uh, the financial services sector. Uh, so we don't know what other investors are thinking, why they're buying, what's selling. But uh, we reckon there are a couple of uh, tailwinds, structural tailwinds, I would say, uh, for the financial services sector in general. One is the financialization of uh, household savings in the country. You know, despite global interest rates going up, India's mortgage rates are, uh, are pretty sensible, right? I mean, I don't, uh, I can't think of a time when uh, U.S. mortgage rates were around five, five and a half percent. India is around seven percent. There's hardly any uh, any difference there. Um, that clearly demonstrates a structural reduction in cost of capital in India, and and a lot of that has to do with the financialization of household savings. A country which historically has been uh, has been sort of enthralled by real estate and gold as asset classes has seen almost a decade of uh, pretty healthy flows into bank deposits, uh, mutual funds, um, mm. you know, small little PMSs like ourselves, insurance uh, penetration going up. So uh, we've finally broken out of that physical asset mold where uh, money is, uh, savings is flowing into financial assets. That's a big structural uh, tailwind which is likely to last for multiple decades. And within the financial services, we reckon there is a, a significant market share gain story that's happening, given the uh, predominant sure. presence of public sector uh, in the past. I think some of the better run private sector banks, uh, NBFCs, uh, private sector insurers, uh, both life in general, have significant opportunities uh, to gain market share. So a double tailwind, I reckon, puts uh, financial services on a structural growth path uh, for the next uh, couple of decades at least. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the sort of change that we're looking at. Sure. The shorter term could be anybody's guess. Okay, Pramod, you know, I, I just wanted to take that point forward with regards to uh, FII's probably looking at investments from a more strategic long-term standpoint and tie it in with the fact that there was this big deal which took place in the hospital space uh, where Max, uh, you know, KKR exited Max Healthcare, but there was enough uh, interest which we saw in that. But separately, something like Apollo Hospitals has lost quite a bit. Uh, it was the top loser on the Nifty this week and they're not getting that uh, funding that they're seeking at least uh, as of now, for their digital arm. Would that space interest you from a long-term uh, standpoint at all, the hospital slash healthcare sector? Not really. I mean, historically, it hasn't come up in our screeners. One of the key parameters we look for in our screeners is consistently high return on capital. Um, that's been missing from this uh, sector, at least, uh, um, you know, every now and then you do see high returns on capital, but not consistently enough for us to look at this sector. Partly because I reckon, uh, given uh, you know these are capital intensive, uh, asset heavy, uh, some of them are moving to asset light models. But by and large, uh, real estate is a big input component into into hospitals, uh, and that's perhaps been a drag on return on capital. But as the sector matures, I reckon more uh, asset light models will emerge. Uh, but structurally, the demand story is mm. fairly intact. Uh, Indians are becoming more. Uh, more affluent and they are they can afford better healthcare services and the country needs healthcare services so to that extent the demand side story is all right sure. uh, but we'd like to see uh, better returns on capital in the sector okay 
Uh, well, you know, Pramod, we've run out of time, but one very quick question before we end the show. We were just talking about all these new launches that have come out from the auto sector. Uh, is this a space, I mean, it looks very exciting with stocks at record highs and new launches, but is this a space that's become a bit of an overcrowded trade now, or do you think there's still more to go? I'm not sure about the overcrowded nature, but I think autos do pose a structural long-term opportunity, um, given, um, you know, like I said, if India were to grow from $2,000 per capita GDP, uh, you do hit that uh, sort of inflection point where uh, there will be significant uh, uh, savings coming through, people moving from uh, spending on staples to discretionary in the auto is perhaps one of the more uh, uh, you know, first items to take on the discretionary front penetration, uh, primarily in four wheelers to some extent in two wheelers is still uh, is still a long way to go. To that extent, the structural growth opportunity is intact, uh, but I think uh, there have been a few supply side challenges around semiconductor availability and so on. But those are more shorter term <laughs> challenges in my view. For longer term investors, autos and auto ancillaries have always provided uh, plenty of money making opportunities across the globe across cycles. Oh. Pramod, uh, we'll leave it there today. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, before we wrap up, we didn't discuss the stock of the week, uh, PVR. Uh, PVR. 15% <laughs> down. Uh, are you guys not up. watching any movies? Sonia, I don't like I'm watching it at the theatres. I'm very happy watching it in my <laughs> home and at my own comfort. I feel that... I don't have any patience levels left anymore yeah. after COVID, I think, you know. Yeah, but the content has really been very disappointing. That, we were that discussing this, is, this uh, earlier the, in the this morning. This is the only yeah. reason. I, that know, the, the only movie that I've week. watched is Top Gun in the theatre. After yes, that, yes, I have top. no feeling, no, no desire seen top to put Top Gun. I've seen I've seen KGF as well. I've seen Bulbulaya too. But the the last few movies, I believe, it's just been too bad. Just rehash of the previous films. And trends are also changing, right? People don't really want to go to the theatre anymore. Okay, well, anyway, buying the new car, the K10. I was just going to say that Pramod mentioned over. You mentioned overcrowded trade, but it's overcrowded cars. Yeah. <laughs> on the Too many road. cars. You can't on the differentiate road. one from the other for me. Yeah, but the new one's not bad. You know, I mean, it's just which it's one? Four lakhs. The a, K10. All, the new Alto K10. K10. You can zip around with that Absolutely. small car. Absolutely, and parking won't be a problem. And parking won't be a problem. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Thanks a lot for tuning in to Editors Roundtable. We'll be back again Monday morning.